Welcome back. Kitty O'Neill has spent a lifetime running ahead of the pack. She's been a model for a Barbie doll, she's been a stunt woman in Hollywood, and she is a world speed record holder. Jay Elson has her incredible story. Nestled into the landscape of North Central South Dakota is a small town with a unique name. As its posted population suggests, lightly traveled streets and sidewalks are as normal in Eureka as the annual wheat harvest. Socially, this place is about as far away from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood as a person can get, and that's just fine for one of the town's highest profile residents. Unlike most people in Eureka, Kitty O'Neill's story didn't start here, and considering the road she's traveled and the falls she's taken, not many could have guessed it would end up here either. O'Neill wasn't reconnecting with roots or chasing some job. She just wanted peace and quiet. I got tired of living in LA. I don't like big city to community people. So I moved over here. And I fell in love with the people. It was so pretty. They were very family oriented. I like that. The opening chapter of Kitty's story set the tone for her improbable journey. She was born on March 24, 1946, in Corpus Christi, Texas. Five months later, life took its first turn. I had a piece of small box in the high fever to kill my dogs. That's how I became deaf. Despite her hearing loss, O'Neill's mother was determined to give her daughter a normal childhood. She refused to let Kitty learn sign language and instead helped her develop and understand speech through lip reading. She also encouraged her daughter to remain active. So when Kitty began showing an interest in diving, she was prepared to do anything to support her. In 1962, Kitty and her family moved to Anaheim, California, so she could train with two-time Olympic gold medalist Sammy Lee. It was under his tutelage that O'Neill became one of the top young divers in the country. By 1964, she was training for the Olympics herself, when her life changed course once again. Then I broke my wrist. So I had a spinal meningitis after that. I got sick so I started all over again. And I got bored. So I wanted to do something fast, speed, motorcycle, water skiing, boat, anything. She'd end up doing a little of everything. But her first real dose of adrenaline came in 1970 when she set the women's water ski speed record at 104.85 miles per hour. The emotion, the feeling that you had when you set a record, how did that feel to you? Thrill. Thrill. Feels good. Speed. So you get a big close bump. I love it. From there, Kitty's quest for thrills intensified. She dabbled in motorcycle and off-road racing, even competing in some of the sport's most grueling events, such as the Baja 1000 and Mint 400. But it wasn't long before her unending desire to go bigger led her in yet another new direction. In the mid-1970s, she met a man that would eventually help vault her to celebrity status. That man was Hal Needham, and he happened to be the top stuntman in Hollywood. So yeah. Uh told me about his son. I said, what? What son is? He said, I'm going to train you. Okay, here I am. I don't know what that means. Not only did Needham get Kitty into the movie business, he also helped her become the first woman to join Hollywood's most exclusive stunt group, Stunts Unlimited. It was at that point that O'Neill's career really, and quite literally, blew up. From car crashes, to explosions, to death-defying falls. O'Neill made a living laughing in the face of fear. Movies like Airport 77, Smokey and the Bandit 2, and The Blues Brothers. TV series such as Beretta, The Bionic Woman, and Wonder Woman. All of them put Kitty in some sort of precarious situation, but she never backed down. No stunt was too big. It's all I can feel. I'm afraid of anything. 
it's doing. It feels good, but it feels right in. I'm a lot of faith with God. Kitty may not have approached a stunt with any kind of fear, but that doesn't mean she was never afraid. In August of 1977, she became the fastest woman on water when she piloted a jet-powered boat named Captain Crazy to a record speed of 275 miles per hour. But once was enough. But one way is okay. But the second time, ah, uh, I said, no, thank you. The moment do it again, I said, no. This is driving like, driving in the ice, I can't control. But then I speed, that speed, I can't control. Ironically, Kitty's closest call would occur on land less than a year later. In March of 1978, she climbed behind the wheel of this rocket-powered Corvette funny car for a TV special called Super Stunt 2, which was narrated by Golden Globe-winning actor Rock Hudson. He, along with a national TV audience, watched as Kitty's run came to a very violent end. But she's going too fast to stop! She's going to go into the desert! Flipping in over end and over end! Hey, tremendous crash down there! Wreckage is strewn everywhere! That car went through the air about 250 feet! Fortunately, they didn't all end like that. In fact, two previous turns behind the wheel were extremely successful. On June 7, 1977, Kitty clocked the quickest quarter mile in history at 3.22 seconds with a top speed of 412 miles per hour. But it was the record she set just six months earlier that would be her most celebrated achievement. In December of 1976, Kitty climbed into the cockpit of the hydrogen peroxide-powered three-wheeled rocket known as the SMI Motivator. On her first attempt, she ran an average speed of 512.710 miles per hour, shattering the previous record for women by 200. Wow. You're not fast enough. You're gonna go faster, faster. But Kitty would never reach those speeds again. In fact, she slowed down considerably. She retired from the stunt and land speed business in 1982 and ultimately made the move to Eureka 11 years later. A corner of the town's Pioneer Museum now holds the pieces that remain from her former life. And it was in this very spot that Kitty was introduced to the latest land speed sensation, another woman with South Dakota ties. And you had a visitor last year, Jessie Combs. Yeah, Santa Combs, yeah. And she came up here to tell you that she's gonna try and break that record. What, what do you think about that? I'm proud of her. I'm happy for her. Obviously, do it again. If you say break the market, then I'll do it again. It's a challenge. Joined by Jay Elson. And all right, when, when is Jesse going to try to break Kitty's record? Well, a couple of months ago when we first talked to Kitty, we weren't sure. She hadn't really officially announced those plans yet. But since then, she has come out and said September's the time. That's when she's going to go for it. If she gets it, uh, she will be the quote unquote fastest woman in the world. And that's a big deal in the land speed community because Kitty has held this particular record for such a long time. All right. Thanks, man. You bet. Jay Elson. Our thanks to Kitty O'Neill, to Austin Handley, and everyone involved with the Whitewater Project in Manchester and in Sioux Falls. Thanks for watching Midco Sports Magazine. This has been Midco Sports Magazine, presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.